The Turtle Room. Education. Conservation. Survival. Hello everyone, this is Anthony from The Turtle Room. Tonight I will be showing you uh, detailing a setup of a new terrestrial turtle habitat that will be used for some, in, some um, tortoises that we'll be getting soon. As you see, the tub in the middle is not set up. That is a small waterland uh, land tub, which is obviously smaller than the two tubs that it is um, positioned between. The tubs on the end are, on the left, a waterland water tub uh, in the medium size, and all the way to the right is the same size tub, uh, same dimensions, but obviously shorter, and that's the land version. As you can see, on this land version, which is used for Malagasy spider tortoises, which some of you may have seen in our videos in the past, that tub is actually filled in. So there is a ramp on the side. You can see the cutout right there um, in the larger tub. That would normally be a ramp, and this far end of the tub would be filled with water, which obviously is an option for this smaller version. However, uh, we prefer to fill in the entire thing and we'll use a small dish, as you see there, for water. So if a tortoise falls over, rolls over onto its back, it will not drown. The first layer that I've put down is what we call an LDL, or a lightweight drainage layer. Some people will also use pea gravel for this purpose. It really helps with drainage and it also helps the plants to um, acclimate, which obviously this will be a planted enclosure. So the next two ingredients, besides the live plants which you can see, the lighter brown is peat moss, which helps ward off uh, mold. And the darker substance is organic topsoil, which uh, really acts as a filler and also helps the plants grow. The plants won't grow in just peat moss. Now with the topsoil and peat moss mix, we add our next ingredient, which is cypress mulch. And this substrate will help to retain moisture um, for this humidity-loving species. And um, that, coupled with the peat moss, which wards off mold, really makes for a substrate mixture that is really advantageous for a keeper because you want to keep it moist but obviously don't want to have to deal with the mold so that's why we have that and we keep it towards the top so we'll mix it in a bit but we'll leave it more towards the top now you see the addition of a mercury vapor bulb which gives off both UVB and heat so it's a more expensive bulb but a really great one to have on an enclosure like this you also see the addition of more live plants, a water dish, and up in the corner there, and down in this corner, we have two hides made out of a plant pot that's been cut in half. Now, for a last addition to the substrate, we'll put some sphagnum moss, which is really a wonderful thing to add for a humidity-loving species like that, which we'll use this enclosure. Um, this substance will both ward off mold and retain moisture. So it really does what the peat moss and the cypress mulch do um, all by itself in uh, one package. So um, with the addition of that, since this species doesn't really use hides very much, um, it's important to make sure we have the sphagnum moss in all corners of the enclosure and. Um, spread out throughout. So now you see it's been a couple days and some wild bird seed that's been planted in the enclosure has started to grow into small sprouts which add security for the tortoises and obviously another form of food as well. If you were wondering what tortoises would be inhabiting this enclosure here you have it. The, this enclosure holds four hatchling Pyxis planicauda or flat-tailed tortoises from Madagascar 
one of the world's rarest tortoises. So hopefully they like it. Hopefully we can continue to improve uh, upon this design as time passes. And uh, I thank you for watching this video and hope to give you many updates in the future. Thank you.